The load instruction has two operands, the destination register where we will store our data ultimately, and a PC offset that tells us where the data that we want us to load is stored in memory. Um, so let's walk through an entire instruction cycle of the load instruction. So if I wanted to run the one here at x3000, the first thing that I would need to do is actually perform the fetch operation to uh, load this instruction into the instruction register. So what's going to happen is first thing is I'm going to do x3000 into my memory address register. I'm going to update my PC counter to x3001, <clears throat> and then I'm going to store my load instruction into the memory data register, which is then going to send that information into the instruction register. So once I start, then I decode the signal, realize it's a load, and then I start executing the instruction. The first part of the instruction is to evaluate where the data is stored inside the memory. And the way we do that is by taking the offset and adding it to the current value of the program counter. So if I add these two guys together, what we get is x3010. And notice that we're doing the incremented PC, not the original program counter that, where the instruction is stored. <clears throat> so once I have my address, I'm going to put that into my memory address register. And I'm going to have x3010. And now I'm going to load the data from the memory address that's stored at the memory address, so x3010. And I'm going to put that into my memory data register x4000, and then I'm going to store that into my register 3, so now I have loaded the data from memory. The LDI instruction is almost identical. Um, in terms of a structure, you have the destination register and a PC offset, but its behavior is slightly different because we're going to treat this information here, this x4000, as an address rather than data. And this is a conceptual choice, and we'll show you what that means. So if we do the exact same thing before, we'll start at x3000. We'll fetch our instruction, updating our PC to x3001. Our memory address register will have x3000. And then my load MDI, my memory data register will have the LDI instruction stored inside there. And then we'll put that in the instruction register, and we'll start the execution process. What happens? Again, we'll add these two guys together and we'll make that equal to x3010 and we'll put that into our memory address register. Once we have the data in the memory address register, we'll load this x4000 into our memory data register. And so that becomes x4000. And as I said a moment ago, we're going to treat this as an address. So we're going to put this back into the memory address x4000 and then we're going to load the data from x4000 into the memory data register. So that becomes x1234. And now finally, that's the data I really wanted to load. So I'm going to put that into my register 3. <clears throat> so the question is, why do I want both a load and a load indirect instruction? So the load in load instruction is really designed just to be able to go to nearby addresses inside the memory to do a load. And so the farthest you can get away from it is negative 256 addresses, because there's 9 bits inside the PC offset. It can also go all the way up to here, um, going to 255. So it can only address addresses that are really close by. Whereas the load indirect will find a, a memory address stored in a nearby register, and that address can be anywhere in the RAM and allows us to do this. The downside is this instruction takes more clock cycles to execute, whereas the load instruction takes fewer, and that's your engineering trade-off.